Hi everyone, welcome back to the Med Student Success YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about high yield respiratory presentations. We'll be going over the most high yield respiratory concepts tested on the step one exam. Like always, I'll be mentioning a vignette. Take a second to pause the video and try to guess what you think the answer is going to be. And if you find our videos helpful, please subscribe to our channel, like the video, and share them with all of your med school friends. I've also partnered with TrueLearn to provide you with $25 off the TrueLearn question bank. I'll have the link in the description box below and you can use a discount code SUCCESS25. All right, let's get started. So the first patient's gonna be a premature baby with respiratory distress and hypoxia and chest x-ray will show ground glass appearance. This is neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Next, we have a patient with smoke inhalation or nitroprusside use or a burn victim who presents with headache, nausea, vomiting, and shortness of breath. They'll have a normal PaO2 with an elevated lactate. This is cyanide poisoning. Next, we have a patient whose car is running in the garage they have headache, nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, flu-like symptoms, elevated carboxyhemoglobin with a normal PaO2. This is carbon monoxide poisoning. Next, we have a patient with headache, fever, sneezing, rhinorrhea, and tenderness to the palpation of the sinuses. This is rhinosinusitis. Next, we have a teenage male with recurrent epistaxis and a lesions noted in the nasal canal. This is nasal angiofibromas. Now we have an Asian male with persistent unilateral nasal congestion, recurrent epistaxis, necrotic lesion noted on the nose, and it's associated with EBV. This is nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Now we have a patient whose post-thoracic surgery has a fever, tachycardia, cloudy fluid draining from the sternum, and clicking of the sternum. This is mediastinitis. Next, we have a patient whose FEV to FVC ratio is less than 70%, and examples include COPD, asthma, and bronchitis. This is obstructive lung disease. Now we have a patient whose FEV to FVC ratio is over 70% or normal, and examples include pulmonary fibrosis and sarcoidosis. This is restrictive lung disease. Now we have a patient who has shortness of breath and cough. They're a smoker. Chest x-ray will show barrel-shaped chest with flattened diaphragm. And there's no improvement of the FEV to FVC ratio with bronchodilator. This is emphysema. Now we have a patient coughing up clear sputum, smoker, recent viral or bacterial infection, and the reads index is over 0.5. This is bronchitis. Oftentimes for bronchitis, they'll mention a patient with a long history of this uh, cough and sputum production. Next, we have a patient who is a child that presents with shortness of breath and a nighttime cough with wheezing, and the FEV to FVC ratio improves with bronchodilator use. This 
this is asthma. The wheezing here is really high yield. Next, we have a patient who has a productive cough with purulent sputum, occasional hemoptysis, recurrent respiratory infections, and CT scan shows bronchial wall thickening, dilation, and mucus plugging. This is bronchiectasis. Next, we have a patient with progressive exertional dyspnea, non-productive cough, FEV to FVC ratio is normal, and CT shows honeycombing pattern. This is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Now we have a patient who has exposure to chemicals such as plastic, paint manufacturing, animal protein like bird dropping in feathers or fungi, with a dry cough, dyspnea worse with the exposure, and CT shows ground glass opacities, centrilobular nodules, and air trapping. This is hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And remember, it's going to be worse when they're exposed to this agent. And when they go on vacation or they go somewhere else away from the exposure, it gets better. Now we have an African-American female with a persistent dry cough, hypercalcemia, and chest x-ray shows hilar lymphadenopathy. This is sarcoidosis. Now we have a patient who's in construction, shipbuilding, or mining, has a dry cough and dyspnea, and chest x-ray shows pleural plaques. This is asbestosis. Now we have a patient in the aerospace industry with a dry cough and dyspnea, Chest x-ray shows hilar lymphadenopathy and interstitial infiltrates. This is beryliosis. Now we have a coal miner with a cough productive of black sputum. A chest x-ray shows opacities in the upper posterior lung fields. So this is coal workers pneumoconiosis. Next, we have a patient who's a sandblaster. They present with a dry cough and dyspnea. Chest x-ray shows nodules in the upper or middle lobes and eggshell calcification. This is silicosis. Now we have an obese male with daytime fatigue and sleepiness snoring and waking up in the middle of the night. This is obstructive sleep apnea. Now we have a patient with BMI over 30, daytime fatigue and excessive sleepiness, PaCO2 is over 45 while they're awake, and it's a diagnosis of exclusion. This is obesity hypoventilation syndrome. Next, we have a patient with chronic pulmonary disease. They have dyspnea on exertion, lower extremity edema, JVD, a loud P2, and a parasternal heave, indicative of right ventricular hypertrophy. This is pulmonary artery hypertension. Next, we have a patient who was on a recent trip or had prolonged hospitalization or is immobile, presenting with sudden onset of shortness of breath, pleuritic chest pain, tachycardia, and hypoxia. This is a pulmonary embolism. Next, we have a tall male with sudden shortness of breath, decreased breath sounds, hyperresonance to percussion on one side of the lung fields, 
Chest x-ray shows unilateral collapsed lung. This is a pneumothorax. Now we have a tall male with sudden shortness of breath, hypotensive and tachycardic, JVD, decreased breath sounds, hyperresonance to percussion on one side, and chest x-ray with tracheal deviation away from the collapsed lung. This is a tension pneumothorax. Now we have a patient who's post-op. They might develop a mucus plug, or they might have a tumor or a foreign body. And they present with dyspnea, cough, and hypoxia. Chest x-ray shows increased opacity in affected lung and absence of air bronchograms. This is obstructive atelectasis. Next, we have a patient with a pneumothorax, hydrothorax, hemothorax, or pleural effusion. Chest x-ray shows increased opacity in the affected lung and tracheal deviation away from the affected side. This is compressive atelectasis. Now we have a patient with either radiation exposure, interstitial lung disease, pulmonary fibrosis or TB with progressive dyspnea and chest x-ray shows a fibrotic shrunken lung. This is contraction atelectasis. Now we have a patient with neonatal respiratory distress syndrome or acute respiratory distress syndrome or post-op with shallow breathing, they have decreased breath sounds and they're hypoxic and chest x-ray shows ground glass appearance. This is adhesive atelectasis. Now we have a patient with fever and a productive cough, decreased breath sounds, crackles and dullness to percussion on one side and the chest x-ray shows consolidation in the affected lung. This is lobar pneumonia. Now we have a patient with fever and a productive cough, wheezing and crackles heard over multiple lung fields, and chest x-ray shows patchy consolidation around the bronchi and lower lung fields. This is bronchopneumonia. Now we have a college student with a low-grade fever and a dry cough, and chest x-ray shows ground glass appearance and interstitial infiltrates. This is interstitial pneumonia. Now we have a patient with pneumonia, sepsis, fat embolism, or contusion. Diffuse crackles are heard. Chest x-ray shows diffuse bilateral alveolar or interstitial infiltrates. This is acute respiratory distress syndrome. Now we have a patient with dyspnea, pleuritic chest pain, and a dry cough. Physical exam shows decreased breath sounds, dullness to percussion, and chest x-ray shows effusion and blunting of the costophrenic angles. This is a pleural effusion. Now we have a female non-smoker who has a cough, hemoptysis, and weight loss. She has pain and enlargement and swelling of the wrists and hands, and chest x-ray shows peripheral mass. This is an adenocarcinoma. Next, we have a patient who's a smoker with a cough, hemoptysis, and weight loss, high calcium and high PTHRP, Chest x-ray shows a centrally located mass. This is squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. 
Next, we have a smoker with hemoptysis, cough and weight loss, a moon-shaped face or buffalo hump, or they could have hyponatremia or proximal muscle weakness, and chest x-ray shows a centrally located mass in the hilum. This is small cell carcinoma. And remember here, these other associated perineoplastic syndromes are very, very high yield. So if you see like jo joint or bone involvement, think of adenocarcinoma. If you see the hypercalcemia, associate that with squamous cell carcinoma, the one with the keratin pearls. And then if you have Lambert-Eaton syndrome, or if you have SIADH, or if you have Cushing syndrome, associate this one with small cell carcinoma, the one with the small blue cells on pathology. Now we have a smoker presenting with hemoptysis and weight loss. Chest x-ray shows a peripheral mass and biopsy shows large undifferentiated cells. This is a large cell carcinoma. Now we have a patient with flushing, wheezing, and diarrhea, elevated urine 5 HIAA, and chest x-ray shows a central mass. This is a bronchial carcinoid tumor. And remember, this tumor can also affect the right side of the heart. Um, and they also sometimes mention the urine 5 HIAA as a serotonin product. Next, we have a patient who has asbestos exposure and chest x-ray shows diffuse pleural thickening and pleural plaques. This is a mesothelioma. Remember, in asbestos exposure, the most common type of tumor you can get is a bronchogenic carcinoma, and next is the mesothelioma. And remember, mesothelioma is the one that presents with these pleural plaques, so that's very high yield. Next, we have a patient who has shoulder pain, drooping of the eyelids, meiosis, and anhydrosis, and the chest x-ray shows upper lung mass. This is a pancose tumor. And remember, this upper lung mass compresses against the nerves, giving you this uh, Horner syndrome with the drooping eyelids, the meiosis, and anhydrosis. The last presentation is a patient who has bilateral swelling of the face, neck, and upper extremities, engorged veins on the chest, and x-ray shows a right hilar mass. This is superior vena cava syndrome. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. And like always, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. We really hope you enjoyed the video and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Good luck studying everyone.